special triangles that give you exact values. So an exact value is quite different from what you're getting on your calculator when you plug in a value. For instance, if I asked you, what is a sine of 45 degrees? Sine 45, and I plug in 5. Sine 45, and I get 0 0.70710678122. That is not exact, because your calculator is only giving you this many decimal places, and there's some rounding going on. There's more numbers after this that you don't see. So what they did was decide how to figure out an exact value. So this time we're going to use radicals that you have already learned by now in another chapter. So let's take a look at the three different special angles that you're going to be able to give exact values for. And they are 45 degrees. And off this one we're going to get 60 and 30. So those are the three very special angles that you will be given exact values for. Now on a test, they're going to ask you, give the exact value. You're not just going to say solve, it'll be exact. And when you see this word exact, you know that you can't use your calculator. You've got to use these special triangles. So the values come from these two special triangles that we're going to talk about. And one, of course, when you have two sides that are the very same... That's a special kind of triangle, right? It's an isosceles triangle. And this one would be an equilateral triangle where all the sides are the same length. When you have a triangle with two sides that are the same length, it means that these two angles here have to be the same angles. So if those are the same angles and this is 90, then you're left with 90 divided by two, which is 45 degrees. So we have 45 degrees, and we have in the other corner, we have another 45 degrees, because it has to add up to 90. So what they did was, okay, so if I know that these triangles have the same side length, let's call this side length 1. Let's use the smallest numbers we can. Now you could make them bigger, but it's just easier to calculate, right? So if this is 1 and this is 1, how long is the hypotenuse? So remembering your good old Pythagorean theorem, it would say that this side, or c squared, would be equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 2. So that means c is equal to the square root of 2. And there you have the, the side ratios that you're going to use for your special triangles. So that means that the sine of 45 degrees is going to be adjacent. So let's let's go with this one here. So if this is my hypotenuse adjacent from the last lesson is here, opposite over here. So the sine is going to be 1 over root 2. Now your teacher may ask you to rationalize the denominator, which means you multiply by what's the radical in the denominator to make it a whole number. So if you multiply by this, it's like multiplying by 1, right? So that would give me root 2 over 2. The cos of 45 degrees obviously is going to be the very same because we're dealing with 1 and 1 here. So 1 over root 2 again, or root 2 over 2. Neither of these solutions, like this isn't wrong, this is just more simplified. And the tan of 45 degrees is opposite over adjacent, so that's 1 over 1, which of course is just 1. So those are the special values for 45 degrees. Now when we get into the 60-30, you can see that if we start with an equilateral triangle and we drop a perpendicular from the top here, my triangle's not perfectly equilateral, unfortunately. And that's not a very straight line either. But if you drop a perpendicular down, you can see that what you're doing is you're actually cutting the 60 degree angle in half. So let's move this over a little bit like that. So if I drop a perpendicular, that means this is a perpendicular line, uh, angle, sorry. And if this was 60 and I cut it in half, that means this is going to be 30 degrees. 
And there I have another special triangle with 30 and 60, which are the two other perfect uh, uh, exact value triangles that we can work with. So if I had labeled this side one, then I would have had cut this in half, would give me a half, and that's kind of messy. So what they did was they started with all sides being two. So if every side is the very same length, and I cut this side that was two into a half, because I dropped this perpendicular, so that means this is going to be one. So I have one, two, and this one now is going to be um, this side is going to be 2 squared minus 1 squared. We'll call it well, the height is 8 squared. So 4 minus 1, 3. And that means h is equal to the square root of 3. I'm talking about the height here. This is not the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse. Okay, so I have, in the end, I end up with this. So I have 2, 1, square root 3. Now if you just draw these triangles a couple of times I'm sure that you will be able to do all of this without memorizing something. Just understand it. So here we have an equilateral triangle that we cut in half. We wanted this to be a 1 so everything else had to be 2. Those are your values. And here we have 2 an isosceles triangle with two angles of 45, 90, and there's my 1, 1, and Pythagorean theorem gives me square root 2. So if I write out the sine of 30 degrees now, the cos of 30 degrees, the tan of 30 degrees, we're going to get all these special values, sine of 60, the cos of 60, the tan of 60, and just look at the triangle and figure out what they are. So when I'm at 60 degrees here, let's do sine of 60. So opposite is here hypotenuse so the sine of 60 is root 3 over 2 now you may notice that root 3 over 2 would be the cos of 30 degrees because this becomes the adjacent side now so if i was here this would be adjacent cos of 30 would be root 3 over 2 so these ones change position now if we look at the sine of 30 if i was up here opposite over hypotenuse is one half and you may figure out that that would be the cos of 60 adjacent over hypotenuse. Isn't that interesting? You'll see that a lot. And the tan of 30, tan of 30 opposite over adjacent, that's 1 over root 3 which again simplifies to root 3 over 3 and the tan of 60 degrees now opposite over adjacent that's root 3 over 1 which is just root 3. So those are your special values and using that you may be asked to solve for a bunch of different um, different values to find an exact value. I'm going to leave that because I didn't leave enough room to solve this beautiful word problem that is in your homework assignment. Um, I believe it's number 11, 11a in your homework and that's on page something. I'll find it for you in a minute. Okay, but this question asks you to find, find the, it's page 287, 287.11a. Find the exact area of the triangle, the large triangle, which is ACD. So there are some clues. They always give you clues, right? They say, well, the tan of, that should have been the tan of alpha they gave you, tan of alpha equals 1. So the tan of this is 1. Now the only tan 1 I have up here is the tan of 45 is 1. So if the tan of this is 1, and this is a right angle because remember on the other side of this it has to be a right angle. Let's write what we know here. So this is a right angle here. And if the tan of alpha, that's this over this is 1, then that means this has to be 6. So tan alpha equals 1, and I have, so 6 divided by 6 equals 1, so that means AB equals 6. So I have 6, 6. Now, in order to find the area of a triangle, I need the base times the height. So I need to know how long it is from B to C. They give me another clue here. They say this is 60 degrees. 
Now I only have this side to work with and I want to find this side. So for this angle here, this would be the opposite side and this would be the adjacent for this angle here, right? So opposite over adjacent. So that means that the tan of 60 degrees has to be equal to BC over 6. And I do know what the tan of 60 is exactly. The tan of 60 degrees is the root of 3. So because the tan is the root of 3, I can say root of 3 is equal to BC over 6. And that means that BC, if I'm solving for BC, remember this little trick, BC is 6 times the root of 3 or 6 root 3. So now that I have BC and I have AB, AB is equal to 6, and I know the height, BD, is equal to 6 as well, I can find the area. So the area of triangle ACD equals base times height divided by 2. So the base is 6 plus 6 root 3. I don't say that's 12 root 3 because this doesn't have a radical. We can't add these together. So base, this is the base, times the height. The height was 6. So this is base times height divided by 2. And I can divide the 2 into the 6, make that 3, and then multiply this by 3. So that's going to give me... 18 plus 18 root 3. That would be the area of the triangle. And you should be able to simplify that little bit by factoring out an 18. So it would be 1 plus root 3. 18 times 1 plus root 3. And that would be the area in units squared. Because right? the area is in, that's right, units squared. It didn't give us units. It just said that it was 6. Six could be anything. Okay, so that was that's a difficult question from page 287 that I wanted to do, but let's just go back for one second here and do one evaluation using the special triangles. I think I'll just leave this here so that we can refer to it while we're doing the question that I wanted to do for you. So this asks you, determine the exact value. So again, remember when you're doing a task, determine the exact value. So if you see exact value, exact value, and they want to find the exact value of sine 45 degrees, don't forget your little degrees, times the cos of 45, you can make up anything you want here. Just use anything that has a special angle, like sine of 30 or 60, plus the sine of 30 degrees times the sine of 60 degrees. Okay, so I have to go to my exact values. Now, again, I highly recommend that you write out these triangles a couple of times. Just draw, draw them. 1, 1, square root 2, 2, 1, square root 3. And the rest of it, you can read off the, the diagram that you're going to make here for it, right? So the sine of 45, so I go here and I have root 2 over 2. So that's root 2 over 2. This is going to be a lesson in remembering how to work with radicals. The cos of 45, cos of 45 is root 2 over 2. Plus the sine of 30, sine of 30 is a half. And I'm going to multiply that by the sine of 60. The sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. Okay, so now you have to remember how to work with radicals. How do you add, subtract, and multiply them together? So multiplying is the easiest. Remember, you just multiply the tops, the numerators. You multiply the denominators for fractions. So root 2 times root 2 is the root of 4. The root of 4 is 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. So remember, when you're multiplying radicals, you multiply the numerators, you multiply the denominators. Of course, this is going to simplify to 1 half. And here I have 1 times root 3, which is the root of 3, and 2 times 2 is 4. So 
I have a common denominator here and it's 4, so I just have 2 plus the root of 3 over 4 and that would be my answer. Okay, so that's, that's not hard to do. Now remember, if you're asked for an exact value, you must use, you must use the special triangles. And that will help you to solve for, um, get the right answer, which is what we're all after here. So let's try one more um, from your homework. It's number seven, and I'm going to do B. It says root three tan theta is equal to one. And they want to de determine theta. And they tell you that theta has to be between zero and 90 degrees. Now they have to say that because there's all sorts of answers, right, that give you the same value. And you'll look at that very soon in, uh, in this chapter. So if root three tan theta is one, how do I solve for theta? Well, I need to isolate, right? You want to isolate tan theta. So to get rid of this thing, I would have to divide by the root of three on both sides. So now I have tan theta is equal to one over root three or root three over three. And then you would just go back to all of your calculations here and find root three over three. Oh, that would be here. So that means theta is 30 degrees. You wanna do one more? Sure, why not? Let's do 7D that says two cos thetas is equal to the root of three. And again, you need to isolate the cos of theta. You want to solve for theta, you can't have this two in here. So that means cos of theta is going to be root three over two. And again, you're going to go to, like this is what you're going to write out when you start your test, right? You're going to make these two triangles. You're going to write out these ratios. Bam, they're there for you to use. So all I'm looking for is root three over two cos theta, cos theta root three over two. Here it is right here. My answer again is 30 degrees. It's exactly 30 degrees because these are exact, exact values. Okay, and that's your lesson for today. Hope you found it helpful. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know how it's going. Bye.